Go on. Hello and welcome to the Town of Litchfield, New Hampshire Recreation Commission meeting. Today is February 14th, 2023. We are meeting live in the Town Hall Conference Room. The time now is 7 p.m. We'll start off by doing a roll call. My name is Steve Gannon. I am the Chair. Vice Chair Andy Ruggles. Present. Secretary Judy Brennan. Present. Member Peter Ames. Present. Member Michael Bosky. Present. Member Chris Burns. Here. Selectman's Rep Stephen Weber. Present. Absent this evening with prior notification is alternate Jeff Town. Uh, we have two, moving on to approval of meeting minutes. We have two to approve, December 27th, 2023. Um, I don't know who was with us that evening. I think we were all here, right? I was not here, I was there. I can't remember, I know I missed one. I'm not sure if it was that one or not. I thought we already approved it. I thought we already approved these. We, approved, that one we approved both of them last May. Time. Did we? Two, they were on that email, the 27th and the first one of January, whatever that was. Okay, so we just okay. have the, the 24th to approve then. Right. January All right. 24th. All right, so we'll scratch that. We'll move on to January 24th, 23, 2023's meeting minutes. Um, that was a full committee that evening. Has everyone had a chance to read the meeting minutes? Any yep. modifications, edits? A motion to approve. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Any other discussion? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Two, aye. Three, four, five, six, seven, zero, zero. All right. I'm going to take the liberty to adjust our agenda this evening, move new business up higher than its usual. Um, typically, new business comes later in the meeting. However, tonight we have some something to address very important to the Litchfield Recreation Commission. Uh, with us this evening are two very special people, Mrs. Marie Schaefer and her son, Ivan. If you guys would please join us here at the table. Marie and Ivan live in town on Pilgrim Drive. Mr. Peter Ames, would you please take it from here? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And thank you for the opportunity to um, introduce this next item tonight. So tonight, it is our privilege as a commission to consider the memorialization of one of our fields, the Corning Field, to be renamed in dedication of Kurt Schaefer. As folks know, the Litchfield community lost Kurt late last year, and his absence is felt throughout this town. However, his legacy of impact remains, and his dedicated service to our community will continue to benefit the residents of our town for years to come. This is particularly true for the youth of Litchfield, whom he served so well as a leader with the Litchfield Baseball Association. Kurt was instrumental in turning things around for the LBA at a time when participation was low and there were needs for field improvements. Kurt gave generously of his time and labor to revitalize the LBA and improve the fields. In particular, Kurt was the visionary and leader to establish the Justin Bissett Memorial Baseball Complex. He put in many hours of work and skill to develop the complex into what it is today, helping to inspire and serve kids to become more involved in baseball. Kurt was the select board's representative to the Recreation Commission and served on this body for three years. His passion for the LBA was certainly on display here, but his support for recreation activities throughout the community helped the commission on many levels, including his deep knowledge of landscaping. <clears throat> As a dedicated public servant and advocate for baseball and the youth of the town, the commission believes it would be fitting to dedicate the namesake of the cornfield to Kurt. We are honored to have Kurt's wife, Marie, and his son, Ivan, here with us tonight. I know I speak for the commission when I express our gratitude to you for everything Kurt did for this community. Additionally, I want you to know that we share in your grief and want to remind you that the community is here for you, just as Kurt was for the community. And with that, I'll ask, I'll turn it over to you to introduce the proposed name for the fields at Brook Road. We would like to propose that the field be named Kurt Schaefer Memorial Fields. I'd like to make a motion to rename Corning Field to Kurt Schaefer Memorial Fields. I'll second. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Steve. Any discussion on that? All right. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motions carry 700. 
thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, the next move is Steve will have it approved at the uh, Board, of Selectmen. Board of Selectmen. And then uh, Baseball Association, Association will reach out to you and we'll figure out a date and time to have the dedication ceremony. Wonderful. Thank you very much. We You're greatly welcome. appreciate thank it. You for thank you. Thank, thank you. you guys. There's one thing I have to ask you, though, a special favor. When you get home, give her a big hug from us, okay? <laughs> Thanks, Maureen. Thanks, Ivan. Thank you. Good night. Be good well. Night. Good night, guys. Thank you, Peter. Appreciate that. Thanks, Peter. That was great. Thank you, Peter. That was really all right, the next item on the new business is Litchfield Pickleball Association donation. The members, please join us at the table. Good to see you guys. How are you? Good. How are you Thank doing? Thank you. <clears throat> if you would, for record, state your name, and I guess it would be a title, right? <laughs> <laughs> Well, yes. Uh, my name is Ronald Blanus. Uh, I guess the title is president or chairman of the board for the Litchfield Pickleball Association. I'm Bruce Rotenberg. Um, I'm a member of the board and the um, treasurer of the LPA. And I'd like to note, you know, a fair amount of people, uh, I told them we were doing it tonight, and I said it'd be nice to have some faces that would support. So you do have a few people, even on Valentine's night. <laughs> Romantic. What I was asking. I think they're all going out somewhere after. <laughs> yeah, really. So, uh, we had uh, in the past uh, uh, donated to the town uh, a uh, an amount of money. Uh, we collect fees, as you know. Uh, we don't. Uh, you know, you don't charge us any rent. So we appreciate the fact that uh, you know we have a a great resource there that uh, to us is uh, I won't say free, but uh, certainly. Certainly, uh, like something traditional, we don't pay rent. Uh, in the past, uh, it's recognized that uh, you know the donations are helpful for maintenance as you see fit with, even within the building and within the town. And again, tonight we'd like to uh, make a donation of three thousand uh, dollars to the town uh, for on behalf of the Litchfield Pickleball Association. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So, who, who wants it? <laughs> <laughs> Give it to Judy. I'll please. take it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so this donation would be received by the Litchfield Recreation Commission to u be used for Litchfield recreational purposes, correct? Got to get rid of to be used for the town because <laughs> we'll go yeah. into someone else's pocket. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, in the intention was, as uh, I think uh, you know, I, uh, you mentioned to me before, is that fortunately uh, in this town you're able to receive it uh, for recreational purposes, and that's that's good. Uh, uh, you know, our people. Uh, uh, <clears throat> donate each time they play as well as an annual uh, membership fee and uh, it was uh, well received that uh, we are offering a donation to the town so it's our pleasure. so I will make a motion to accept the donation from Litchfield Pickleball Association for the sum of three thousand dollars second any discussion should we, should we amend that they want it to be used for recreational purposes to be used for recreational purposes. <laughs> okay. I'll second the amended. <laughs> okay, thank you. Any other discussion? Thank you, Chris. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries a seven zero zero. Thank, thank you. you, folks. Thank you for the generosity. We appreciate it. Yep. Thank you. <coughs> and thank you for all the work that you do. Here. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Very thank you. Welcome. It's a lot of hard work, but sometimes when you get nights ten like tonight, it just makes it worth it. Well, we've been, we've been here almost 30, well, 33 years now, and we're so thankful for your work, so thank you. Welcome. All right, moving on. Um, next is Eversource. Would the folks at Eversource please join us at the table? Thank you, folks. Appreciate it. Have a good it. evening. Thank Be you. well. Take care. Hello, gentlemen. Good evening. Um, I'll just introduce myself, Mr. Chair. Uh, Donald Stokes, uh, I'm the Community Relations Specialist uh, for Eversource in charge of Southern Region. I'm Remy Schneider, I do project services, so public outreach. Yeah, uh, so I think it's best just uh, real quickly if uh, you know, Remy can just explain the full scope of the work and project that we are doing in the town. Okay, 
So basically, we're just doing uh, storm resiliency and upgrades to the system. Uh, there's seven structures that we're going to be replacing from wood to weathered steel, uh, and then doing an OPGW, so just improving the communication wires uh, between substations. So that's the high level, basically, uh, scope of the project. Okay, yeah, I, we've seen it around town. Um, I live in that general area, so I've seen the work you've been doing on Brickyard already. We're aware of the situation. We were first notified by our road agent, Mr. Brown, saying that uh, you were going to come in, and he asked me, he's like, hey, they're going to, they need to get access to the access road in December. Is that a problem? I said, no. And then we came later on to find out that it's just not access to the road. There's, you're replacing the, uh, the, the, the poles, which is a lot more work. Right. Um, some of the concerns, obviously, we're going to have concerns because that is one of our play fields. We have seven field, uh, parks that we're responsible for in town. Five of them are play fields. One of them is the Scott and his fields, which is um, one of our main soccer and lacrosse fields. Um, our fields are heavily used. As you can see, Litchfield Pickleball is here today. They use Talent Hall. Our Talent Hall is busy from sun up to sundown. Our fields get really busy once the season starts up, um, right after school until sunset. And then every weekend, they are once again sun up to sundown. With us this evening, we have the uh, president of Litchfield Soccer, right? Nope. Nope. It's on the field coordinator. Field coordinator, mm -hmm. okay. You could be president tonight. Now we're the president. <laughs> He's the vice president. There you go. It's close. <laughs> Mr. Bosky, our member, is also the vice president of soccer. Um, so obviously some of our concerns is something that we want to um, speak to you about and address. Uh, our understanding is to get to it, you're going to have to put on a very large wooden pad that's going to be in the neighbor's yard. Um, have you been down there? You know where it is, right? You, you've seen it. So it's the pathway going to the field. The pole is at the end, just outside the fence line to the neighbor's yard. Um, my understanding is you're going to put a big wooden dance floor, I'd call it out there, 100 by 100, so you could put a couple trucks on, makes sense. You're gonna be pull, move, putting in a new pole, then eventually moving the wires and pulling the old pole. Our concern is, number one, access. Uh, safety for the children. Um, access for the parents, the grandparents, being able to get to that field. Um, second concern would be we have services that go back there. Uh, we have a, a portable potty that gets dropped off every spring, and then it gets serviced weekly, I believe it is. And then we also have our field and maintenance contractor needs to be able to get back there to cut the grass, spread the fertilizer, what have you. Um, so that's one of the big ones. Um, the second concern is the fence is going to be taken down. And if you notice, that fence has been around for a while. And in New England, typically, once you take a fence down, you can't put it back up because it just it won't sustain it. So we'd like to know what is the plan for replacing the fences? Um, how much, where is this pad going to sit? Is it going to intrude or impede into the play field? Or is it going to sit off the play field? Um, what are, anybody else? What are the other concerns? I think those are our biggest. Those, 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 those cover. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are the. Those are the tops. Okay, so I can actually, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> I, I, uh, more more familiar with the with the project. I've been on the ground. I've already talked to Linda Lascelles, who lives yep. right next door, to the where right. the yep. where the pole actually sits. Uh, so to address some of these, um, so I've spoken with our construction rep, and it's totally possible to create a sort of bridging system. Um, we don't necessarily we are not going to necessarily be using wooden uh structure pads okay. uh, we can use plastic they're thinner it's a little bit easier to get over them so we're, access to the field should not be compromised okay. you should be able to get um through that area for pedestrian as well as for equipment? pedestrian and vehicles okay yeah so i know that one of the concerns was being able to get an ambulance to the field which is you know totally fine um we would be able to accommodate that and make sure that access is not compromised so everybody should still be able to get to the field um from that how how, how high up off the ground are these pads set i don't have be a able specific to get the maintenance equipment back there yes mowers and everything so else? we can we can actually create a bridging system <clears throat> to make sure that it's like almost a ramp up okay. and then over so that that shouldn't impede any movement with vehicles okay because the wooden ones are almost like railroad ties. Yeah, they are quite yeah. quite large. Right. But based off of where we are in that, we shouldn't need such a extensive 
um, swamp mat mm -hmm. is what we call yep. them. Uh, it's not a very wet area. It's it's fairly durable, um, so we should be able to get away with plastic and just basic uh, rock. Okay. So uh, the pad should sit mostly in Linda's backyard, okay. um, and we will be replacing that portion of the fence that you brought up. So it is wooden. We plan on replacing it with another wooden fence. Um, we aren't touching the recreation field whatsoever. Our project will not go anywhere near that. Uh, it will stop directly in our backyard where we'll be doing work. Okay. Um, the metal fence across the path in the other neighbor's yard, yeah, the Johnsons. Um, we've discussed that and we're not sure if we're going to be impacting that fence, okay. but I have been insured or assured that we can roll that fence basically up because it's chain link and then put it back basically where it is. So that shouldn't be impacted. And obviously if we do, uh, do do any damage to that fence, we'd be happy to replace that as well. If we, you know, do have to. Um, so that's fence. So when you're replacing the fence, is it just the sections you take down or is it the entire length of fence? We were expecting to take down just out. the portions of the fence that we need to get to the structure. So if you, there's a distribution pole uh, basically from the end of the, the path of the, uh, to the recreation field to that distribution pole is the section that we were anticipating needing to take down. Okay. So that should be the width of the construction area. So the pads are not going to be the 100 by 100 that you typically it, see? It won't. I, I don't if, think we'd actually be able to fit a 100 right, by 100 that, pad in there. That, well, that was the first concern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I assume in some of the situations, like a little bit further down in the... Uh, the, the regular power line area mm -hmm. where you have the access, you have the ability, then you'll take advantage of it. But exactly, because that was my first concern is we're not going to be able to access the fields with the timber ties that are this big and it's a hundred and hundred by a hundred. And you know, and then it may take three months. It's like we can't shut that field down right. for three months. So, um, for your information, this project, uh, it, sh it shouldn't be um, three months. Right. We're expecting to start access in civil in March. And then we should basically have all the structure replacements done by the end of April. So that access road, because it only will, uh, we'll only be using it to do one structure, should take us a very limited amount of time. And obviously, we're very hopeful to work around everything that could possibly be happening in that recreation. In your typical work hours? So typically, it's seven to five. Okay. Um, obviously, we'd be happy to to maneuver if you guys need uh, that space at a very specific time. We can get out and just make sure to. Um, have everything done that we need to by the time session practices. Five would be the earliest. It, yeah. It's Monday, Monday through Friday, right? Or is weekends? Only? So we do, I believe we need permission to work on Saturdays and Sundays. We're not anticipating needing to do that, but obviously because of the situation and you guys need the access to the field probably pretty early, we probably won't do any work on Saturdays and Sundays in that area. Okay. Okay. And when does soccer typically start? I mean, it, once it's dry Mid -April. enough to play. Mid-April. Mid -April. In practice maybe a week before that but so if you start mid-april it's it's possible that we can work with our construction crews to make sure that we're done in that area before mid-april i mean the, the the sooner the better let's put it that right. way okay. i mean that, that's okay. i mean march is going to be it's going to be empty there so yeah, but you know i mean that, i there's always you know i mean the, you, you can plan for the best of things and absolutely you can't promise anything but absolutely you can plan for it. yeah weather will impact warm, both of us winter. right yeah. Don't, so far. don't, no, don't, like that. Yeah, don't, don't do that. But just to confirm, the fields are used Monday through Friday. In the evening, yeah. In the evening, uh, generally starting after, after five. Usually after five. Yeah. After so five. It'll, it'll okay. be, if you're there till five, it should be fine. Okay. Uh, we've already sort of told Linda that we won't be storing any equipment on site, uh, any heavy machinery. She was concerned that um, kids could start playing on some of the equipment, and we don't obviously want that. Um, so we're not going to be storing anything there. Okay. Well, as long as we could work with you and you could block off that access to pedestrian access while you're back there right. um, prior to soccer starting. Mm -hmm. um, so you have our full permission to, you know, there's a chain up there which doesn't do much and it's hard to prevent people from going back there. But we could help work, you know, we're okay with you putting something up, telling people sure. no access until, the, until that point. Um. 
I also just like uh, just to, like clarified. It's like uh, I also like notify the town when work starts and when work ends. Okay. Um, so if there's any like uh, you know, I'll talk to Cam, uh, Tom, and administrator. But if there's any uh, you know hours that you be changed, just uh, come through me and let me know, and I can relay that to product services on the ground. Okay. Okay. Yeah. The main thing, like as Mike said, is after school is when it starts. You know, and they they start what after dinner, as long as it's light until it gets dark and. That's yeah. practice, and then the games start. You know. Games of the weekend, so. But you do not anticipate going into the fields at all because no. our fields do have irrigation and wells and everything else, so that would be another concern that. Yeah, that would be outside of our right-of-way, um, yeah. and we just don't anticipate moving anywhere near that. Okay. Yeah, I noticed that when Kevin first mentioned it to me, I went down, and at first I was thinking the lines were above the fields, but they're actually – in more, yep. you know, close to that, above the two properties. <coughs> uh, when are the maintenance services? When do they need access? Just just so I have it on my radar and can make sure. On day, any right? day of the once. week and any time of day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, okay. but they won't, <coughs> depending on the weather, they aren't, gonna, they aren't really going to get out there until mid-April probably. Yeah, he won't be cutting, but he could be putting down lime. He could be putting oh, yeah. fertilizer and so forth. But can I, was, I get your email? I don't see him can... cutting ahead. Absolutely. I brought cards for all of you. Uh, if you have any follow-up questions or I can answer any of the questions, happy to. Well, I can get you in touch with him so you can get that answer. For oh, him. great. That way you can coordinate it. Can I uh, approach yeah. you guys? And... Yep, yep. Yeah, so there'd be two maintenance. The field maintenance is a local landscape awesome, company that we just hired. Um, and then... Uh, the septic service, we do not have a porta potty down there at the time. They'll come down when we call. We'll schedule it, um, but we usually align it when the the kids are going to start being down there. So once Mike tells me we need it here by you know April fifteenth or whatever it is, that's when I'll call and make sure that we have a unit down there. Um, would you rather us have it dropped off earlier? I mean, is it going to be? It's a it's a, it's a basic one ton truck with a you know typically two porta potties in the back, so. If yeah, I, I I don't I think we can work around be able to get back. Yeah, yeah. It, it should not be an issue to again create the, like a bridge structure to to yeah, make get, sure they can get through. anywhere they need to. Okay. All right. Any other discussion around that? Nope. No. Nope. All right. Good. Um, so then I guess at this time we. We'll give you the okay, the, the clear to go ahead and start. Okay. We'll work with you closely with our contractors in uh, soccer so that we know and you know what and when, what to expect. And we'll try to work well together and get you in and get you out as fast as possible. Appreciate that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Have a good evening. Thank you. If you accidentally knock any of that extra fence down, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to drive right over all of it, you can. We don't have anybody else it. from the public that wishes to speak, right? Are you here? No, not that. Not, not on that. All right. Perfect. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Be well. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions that you have, please? Thank you. All right. Thanks, Kim. Okay. Um, next on the item is Spirit of Litchfield reimbursement request. We have two uh, for one twenty-eight nineteen for Romano's Pizza, one sixty-four ninety for Home Depot for Christmas light bulbs. Um, I will make a motion to approve the reimbursement uh, for a total of two hundred ninety-three dollars and nine cents from the Recreation Revolving Fund Spirit of Litchfield account. A second. Any discussion? None. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries 7 0 0. Okay, now we'll go back to public input. Is anybody here from the public that wishes to speak that is not on the agenda? No. Okay, we open public input. We'll close public input. Matt's back there writing down notes. It's awesome. Um, next up facilities and field requests. Healthy Kids Running Series. Sarah Hilson. Do we have Sarah here tonight? No, we do not. All right. Uh, she is requesting to use Rory Memorial Park Sundays, 4.30, every Sunday from 4.30 to 6.4.2023 from about 3 to 6 p.m. It's a 100% Litchfield youth. 
Um, do we have her COI yet? We have the updated one. She sent it to me. Okay. At this time, the calendar is open, and she always seems to magically fit in with all the sports yeah. going on because most of the kids participate in the local sports. Um, that's what happened last year, right? She Wasn't there soccer going on, and she just kind of worked around? No, it was softball. It was softball, softball but we, so. we were done before that time of the yeah. day, so it worked out perfectly. Yeah. And I'd anticipate the same this year. Okay. I just remember your daughter's being in that. Um, They've expanded the age group to 18. Oh, ages really? two oh. to 18, and they have a special needs division too, which is wow. nice. Wow, growing. Yeah. If you've ever seen it, it's really it's cute. Mm -hmm. It's fun yeah, to watch. Yeah, those about. little ones. <laughs> yeah, they run. But yeah, so it's definitely growing. All right, so I will make a motion to approve Healthy Kids Running Series to use Roy Memorial Park for the dates on Sundays from 4.30 through 6.4 from 3 to 6 p.m. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Seven zero zero. Motions approved. Uh, next, Todd Martin. Marlin. Marlin. Todd Dolphin. <laughs> Can't wait for it to be your turn up here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Meeting would have been over by now. <laughs> <laughs> um, requesting to use Talent Hall, this is Litchfield Travel Soccer. Requesting to use Talent Hall 323 through 36 2023 on Thursdays, 6 to 7.30 p.m. He is open to other nights if needed. Uh, we do not have a COI yet, right? No, I've requested their updated one. I just okay. haven't received it's it all yet. File. I can speak all Brian, file. do you want to speak to that? Yeah. Unfortunately, individual at NA. <coughs> Come on up. Because you'll be next, I think, anyways, right? Yeah. <laughs> so the individual at NHSA, unfortunately, passed away uh, just recently, a few days back. And the office is a little, because he's the person in charge of it. So we decided we're going to give him like a week or so to request our insurance waiver. We don't foresee any problem. We've done it year after year after year. So. Yeah. And that was your COI still valid? And just um, did we, well, that's the other question too. We were, had a meeting the other evening, and Mike seems to think that it expires in September. I, I, yeah. I don't have a call. It expires in September. It does. I looked it up. It was. Renews in, it renews in September. Is what it is. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's like it's. So did it lapse this last September, or is it still good till this September? No, it, was, it. We should have sent a new one. September. In September. I couldn't find it anywhere, but I know Jeff has moved some things on the drive to the Google, or maybe sites. 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 Yeah, I could not find it. I went through all the soccer emails that I had to see if uh, there mean, were any attachments, and I couldn't. Yeah, we'll find, find it. It's. But it is a September. It's, it's the same as every year. Well, yeah. I'll find yeah. it. And we just I thought until last night, I thought we had already submitted it. So. Well, I in order for us to have approved, we like, submitted last year. Use, it, you, it would have been, it should have been submitted the COI. But I, what I was, I was saying, I double check everything right. in the dates, and I couldn't yeah, find no, it. Yeah, I, I mean, we'll find it. And um, Jeff had made that spreadsheet, and the old one was still in there, and I couldn't find a new one. Right. So. Okay. So I can probably find the old one before I can find the new one. So <laughs> if I do, I'll, I'll send it there. Well, to my that I my question find is, 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 isn't softball in there at that time? When? Thursday. Thursday, Thursday. Thursday. And, and what time? In there from, uh, what, 4 to 30 to 5.30, right? Correct. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's after that. Yep. And, yeah. and basketball's <coughs> over with. Basketball. <coughs> saying that tonight. So basketball's over with as well. Right. Okay. So it is available. Um, so we can approve this pending the COI. <laughs> JV basketball is also finished. In yeah, Toronto. yeah, I got that message too. <clears throat> All right, so make a motion to approve Litchfield Travel Soccer to use Talent Hall 323 through 36. What is that two weeks a week? Um, for Thursdays, 6 to 7.30 p.m., pending the certificate of insurance. Second. Any further discussion? All right, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Abstains? 
No nays. Six zero one with Mike Bosky abstaining. Uh, we'll move on to yours. New Hampshire soccer camps. Is that you? No. Nope. You have. It's you got the innocent, innocent sawmill saw mill fields. Four one through six twenty five weekdays four to nine p.m. Saturday and Sunday eight to six p.m. for there... soccer games and practices. Is there soccer? Brian. Season? Yeah. Brian Bork requested. So what? It's basically their soccer season. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's, uh, I just I didn't see it down. I didn't write it down last night. Continue. Sorry, Judy. Oh yeah, it was requested by Brian Bork, and then I just noted on the agenda that. Um, requested the updated COI. Okay, it's the same situation, it's just pending the COI. All right, so it's the typical every year, you're back again? Thanks okay. for coming back. <laughs> I'll be back in the fall. <laughs> um, any further discussion on that? All right, so- I'd like to make a, make a motion to approve. I'll second. Now, soccer right. for their spring season. Can you, can you, do you need the details, Matt, or can you figure it out? on the agenda. You got it? All right. Oh, put out, I'll put it all on the agenda to make it easier. Right, I'm speaking to a man in back that nobody knows about. He's like the man behind the curtains. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, so motion made. Who seconded it? I did. Judy did. Judy seconded it. Um, no further discussion. All right. Uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 So you went on this, Steve? Aye. <laughs> uh, nays abstained. Uh, Motion carries six zero one with Mike abstaining. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you, Brian. Appreciate Thanks. It. Have a good night. Uh, moving on, we have. The next one was the soccer camp. Yeah. New Hampshire soccer camps. How are you? How's it going? Good. Yeah, I can just pass. Thank you. I think this is a repeat from last year. Yeah. Yep. There you go. Yep. Yep. If, just for the record, if you could state your name. Yeah, it's Brian Henderson. And your address. You're in town, right? Yeah, 27 Ren Street. Cool. All right. He's seeking to use Sawmill Brook Park Fields 1 and 2 for College ID and Youth Soccer Camp. Uh, 7 11 through 7 14, so just one week, Tuesday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 2 30 p.m. 50 to 99 percent will be from Litchfield. Um, do you have a COI? That's going to be as they get closer and they know their enrollment. Okay. They'll get the COI to us because the number of participants play oh. into their insurance yeah the size of the camp we we did a little bit closer i think it was about two months ahead of time last last year okay how many, how many did you have last year um i think it was just shy of 60 like in the in the 50 something range i expect it to be a little bit bigger this year with some of the high school coaches and that we had it um last year also bentley's coming this year it's a local nice. big school yeah. um, nice. my my former temple coach is coming which is <coughs> cool. he's, a, he's got a lot of division one experience and Things of that nature. So we added two more. The guys that came last year are returning. So how many how many colleges attended? <coughs> Three and the retired Temple coach. So I, who may be arguably the most connected of the bunch of, as far as. So you know. what are you expecting this year? How many? Five? Is it? Hopefully. Um, I'd be guessing. I'm really roughly get, guesstimating here, but hopefully, that 75 area. Nice. And it was successful last year. Good yeah, I thought as, as as far as you know, the coaches liking it. Even the coaches that left, um, I know Wyatt Hemmings, one of our players from our high school, and Widener was definitely. I don't think he's as interested in, in going down there, but there's definitely some link ups and some talk, and the, and the coaches want to come back. So, yeah, it went, it went good for our first year. And there's no conflict with soccer at that time, right? It's during the day, nine to three. It's Monday to Friday. It's during the yeah. summer. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. We'll just Something have to remember to let the um, yeah we need to field yeah, maintenance. Uh, field maintenance. Yeah, I believe I marked on there. I think it does say. Uh, I think it's a Monday through Thursday this year, 11th to 14th. Or there's a Tuesday, 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 Tuesday to Friday. Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday to Friday. 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 Yeah, sorry. Days, yeah, Tuesday yeah. to Friday. <clears throat> All right. Um, 
So we'll make a motion to approve New, New Hampshire soccer camp, uh, New Hampshire, yeah, New Hampshire <laughs> soccer camps, to use Sawmill Brook Parks Field Warning Two for college college ID youth soccer camp 7 through 7 14 um, 9 a.m. to 2:30 p.m. Uh, provided that you provide us the COI prior to the camp starting. Okay. Yep. I'll second. Any further discussion? Here, none. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries seven zero zero. Thank think you. It's great that Appreciate we have that at the you know level for kids looking at colleges. And yeah, sports. No. I think it's really good to have something like that. A lot of the high school kids I coach asked if they just seem confused about the process or anything. Mm -hmm. They ask a ton of questions, and it was kind of one thing I figured I could link together because a lot of the guys I played with are kind of young d3 coaches looking at it they have a good feel for mm -hmm. i think a lot of it at and this point i think point. a lot of high school kids don't realize you really got to start looking like your sophomore year and, oh and even like the the q a might have been one of the best parts i yeah. felt like they had a thousand questions and they were they, they got to get some of that answer yeah, so old athletic like, director at the high school um coach patterson did a really good job with athletes and parents and going through that whole process if you want to continue playing on you know he knew it inside and out and um, it's nice to see something like that, it, though, I think, for the kids who want to continue on and give them an idea of what they need to do and when it, things need to happen. Yeah, I think I mean, it's just a confusing process, too. Yeah. It's like a lot that they sometimes they don't think they can play there or can play there. It's, right. just, it's just a kind of... Or they get an email and they don't know, do I reply to this? Is this yeah, spam? Is exactly. This, you know? And mixed yeah. opinions, too. There's There's always coaches that have different feelings on a certain player or a kid yeah. one kid might not like them i mean one coach might not like them this year and then the next it's there's a totally different opinion so it, it changes quite a bit but yeah i think it's it's been neat so far awesome. thanks so appreciate it thank you thank, thank you, you. Thank thanks you. um gonna take care of burgess street dance and then we'll do yours afterwards okay andy yeah 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 absolutely All right. uh mrs anna Fon fontanis 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 <laughs> <laughs> All right, if you would please state your name and address for the record. Anna Fontana, 6 Burgess Drive. And um, she's seeking to use Town Hall on the evening of Saturday, September 13th to hold a dance recital. Um, Burgess Street Dance is a local dance school in town. Um, she had an exhibit at during the Summer Fun Festival. Uh, Lutchfield participation is somewhere between 1 and 50%. It will be open to the public with a possibly a small entrance fee to cover the cost of materials. Uh, this is um, this event is you're for for profit, but the event is not for profit. We don't charge rent either at Town oh, Hall, okay. so okay. there's no cost there. Um, she will provide audio system, the mic, etc. Um, as a dance studio, as I assume you have insurance. Yeah, I brought that with okay. me. Yeah. Um, what we'll have to do is for that day, just reach out to your insurance provider and ha asking for a one day rider listing the town of Litchfield on it so that we have it specific, you know, specifically for mm -hmm. that. Um, I think this would be a great event for the community, allowing people to witness the town and enjoy a night out. Um, there were no times listed. Um, was there, I was were you flex like a little flexible. I wrote so in the available. agenda. I wrote flexible yeah. because it I was saw on the kind of open. request form it said yeah. no things after sunset. Um, I mean, I prefer it, you know, 6 p.m. or something. But if it if it needs to be during the day, that's fine. But one correction: it was um, May 13th, not September 13th. We have, I have May 13th. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it's Saturday. Saturday. Okay. What time Saturday. is pickleball out of there on Saturdays? They're there at night right now. They're there until 8:30 p.m. So we'll need to work with them. They're, and they're pretty. They're, they're good. Flexible okay. about that. Well, so. well, May. It could be an afternoon or morning. With basketball ending, they could be there all morning. They could be out there all morning. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah so, they'd probably get rid of Saturday nights. <laughs> maybe. Yeah, I mean, you never know what those guys. That's been, that's been <laughs> night out. It could be a big night out. But they've been it easy be. to work with when we okay. have one yes. day yeah. event. Yeah, so I'm flexible with the time. We can. What would be your preferential time, and then I can reach out? Um, preference would be night to give it that sort of show feel. Like, uh, but I've been about seven p.m. Um, mm -hmm. but maybe not to. I, I checked the sunset. No, I forgot. Maybe say I'm fine with six oh, or seven. Roll yeah. with five to whenever. Like five. Because you're going to need time to set up. You're going to need time to set up and everything. Yeah. Well, five yeah. to nine. So, well, so yeah, yeah, do five to nine, and I'll 
Double five to nine, list. five to ten. Yeah, five yeah. to ten. It's not like anyone else is going to come in after. And are you thinking about using the stage? Um, I think the t- stage is too small, so I was looking at using um, one of the long widths of um, the gym. Okay. And um, if necessary, running a dance floor, so the cost of admission would go um, to that cost. Um, and then I'd probably need to partition off part of the gym to make a makeshift um, changing room with maybe some tall poles and curtains or something. Okay. Um, were my ideas. Um, so the, probably the do that st- on the stage. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Put some poles, Put some poles up in front. Oh, and use that as yeah. the yeah. stage as the changing. Yeah. Yeah. There's and also a small kitchen. You need area chairs set up for the audience, or? I would. Yeah. If I if they don't have chairs there, I could rent chairs. There's, um, chairs, there. okay. there's chairs. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Chairs. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then ahead of time, one of us could go in, show you where the plugs are, how to okay. you set the alarm. Okay. Before and after. Have you you've been in Talon Hall, right? Yeah. Okay. okay. Just make <laughs> <laughs> Set expectations. Was, yeah. <laughs> no, I'll go home. <laughs> so, all right. Any other discussion on that? Okay, so make a motion to approve uh, Brenda's motion to approve 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 Brenda's a third. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any further discussion? No. Uh, please signify by saying, raise your hand and saying aye. 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 Seven zero zero. Thank you very much. So just stay in touch with Judy. She'll work with you on yeah. getting okay. whatever. In, yeah. And in my it. husband and I own an entertainment company, so I operate under that for the certificate of insurance. If That's. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. It's, Do you want. Now or we'll just it? need the one with the one day that says town of Lich list. Yeah, they're very okay. Don, yeah, usually you can put down. That on there. It's already oh, on there. Did. Oh, it's already yeah, on there. You're good to go. Jeez. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Perfect. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, see, we see you in the audience, but are you here for any reason or just yeah, to witness? He's, he's uh, one of the pickleball vendors. Oh, okay. So, per- yeah. All right. Um, we can do Andy. Yep. 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 Denied. I was just hoping I didn't yeah. miss anything. We're going to deny it. <laughs> Denied. Oh, yeah. Do we even have to? Yeah. All right. Litchfield Baseball Association is requesting to use <coughs> Talent Hall from 227 to 2, <coughs> to 411 Mondays, 530 p.m. to 730 p.m. for... Yeah, 530 to 7. 530 to 7 for... Um, baseball. Practicing. Yeah. And you have a CIY? We do. I'll get you a fresh one. Then. The fresh one's, I think, already approved. Yeah, I think we already have it. I thought so, too. Yeah. Okay. Um, and you already, you know that baseball's out, uh, basketball's out of there, so the gym's open. And, and if not, we'll, we won't go until they are. You'll you know, we won't do it until they are. So. All right. Um, so I'll make a motion to approve Litchfield Baseball Association to use Talent Hall. Second. Any discussion? Yeah, so Andy. Tell yeah. me a little bit more. <laughs> damage to the you walls to, or the floor. Why don't you sit there? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to time you while you speak. Oh, technically, Andy's the one who's supposed to sit Yeah, yeah. You, yes. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Andy, you Would you to... stand, please? State your name and, <laughs> and address. All right. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 One, aye. One, Reluctantly. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. Uh, nays, abstained. Aye. <laughs> five, zero, two. I'm surprised you didn't oh, no. change. I'm kind of pot of oh, I'm surprised you didn't change your vote, Judy, to no. <laughs> I didn't want to go on public record. <laughs> I didn't want to take it that far. Um, Get this right. harassment in the notes, please. <laughs> I'm just going to go through old business real quick, and then we'll go on to you, Chris, if you don't mind. Yep, do you need that fine. TV on also? Uh, yeah. Uh, do you want to go with that I'm, now, or... Something you can turn it on. I'm just going to go. Um, so, Mr. Musco from the CHS Basketball Mike, I got the remote. has uh, notified us that their season is over and they're no longer using Talent Hall, and I removed it from Mike, the calendar. Get the remote. No, no um, it's fine. I reached out to Coach K and Ryan about the ropes court situation, and he's going to get back in touch with us and schedule a time to have a conference call so that we could figure out what is the future of the ropes course as well as. Um, Dropping the line for the dr- oh, wow. drilling well for the truck to get in there. 
And that is moving on. We're going to hand it over to Pickleball Updates. Quotes, Mr. Chris. So, let's over there, see if we can try to go this way. There. All right. So, I know we've been talking about this for a while. Um, to, to as, as an update, we have uh, we, we went in front of the board of selectmen. They let us direct solicit, solicit for the construction of the surface and the fencing. Um, the the actual grade work and site work is already being taken care of. Um, so this is really the finished finished uh, product that we're looking at. Um, I reached out to uh, two companies for the surface work, painting lines and fencing, and then a third company just for the fencing. Um, I've gotten quotes from all three. My hope is to uh, review them tonight, and if everything looks good and within budget, approve one or, or multiple um, based on the options that we're, that we're discussing here. So where we stand right now, this is the, uh, the proposed site at Sawmill Brook. Um, we've got the, the tennis courts here in this grayed out area. The driveway that's existing, parking area that's existing here, we're going to put in six pickleball courts. This drawing is um, is is actually sideways right now. The court layout uh, has changed um, after discussing it with Pickleball Association um, and the direction of the course uh, courts, so that uh, they they reduce the sun glare um, during during the the low the the low sun sometimes. Um, so that's going to be shown in some of the renderings here. Uh, one of the one of the um, vendors that I reached out to was was nice enough to put together a, some pretty good renderings of what it's going to look like. So we're going to have four courts going along this side. Uh, if, if if you look back at that map, the driveway and parking area is here. And then we're going to have two courts that go here. The handicap accessible parking is going to be here with a, a little ramp that comes up towards the the courts that way. Um, this is what we are looking at here. Um, ten foot tall chain link fence around the perimeter. Uh, pickleball was looking for some features uh, inside the courts for fencing to uh, reduce stray balls from rolling all the way across the courts, slowing down play in between. So we've got a, a four foot wide walkway that spans the length of the courts uh, on this side. And then a six foot wide walkway that goes down the middle here for um, queuing or, or players to line up um, for their turn to play. Uh, in addition to divider uh, fencing uh, between each court to keep the balls in, 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 their, in their areas there. Um, so this is, this is one direction. Um, went too far, sorry. This is from the other side. You can see the, uh, the walkway coming down here. We've got some openings in the fence, um, which there's another plan that I'll show you a little bit uh, better what that'll look like. But there's three along the front and then one in the side uh, over here. Um, and then from the parking area, uh, what it'll look like. So you can see that this, this opening's on the side, one in the middle that goes into that walkway, and then one on the side over here, um, plus the, the additional one there. I, I'm, I'm thinking we might want to make an additional opening back here just in dealing with the tennis courts out front in the fall and trying to clean up the leaves. Yeah. Um, right now what we have to do is, is go down and blow the leaves out the two doors on the side or the two gates. Um, these are going to be open. There, there isn't going to be any gates, so it should be easier to blow the leaves out. But uh, these two openings here, and if we put one in the back as well, I think would be a good good place to, to get the, the leaves and debris yeah, out. Make like a courts. little easier access if balls go out that way. Out that end, yeah. mm -hmm. too. That yeah. you don't have to come all the way back and, yeah. and go around. So, uh, so we've got um, a company, DG Contracting uh, Sports Courts. Dave's, Dave's here and he can talk about this a little bit more. Um, but they've provided two options. Um, the court surface is the same in both options. This is a painted surface. Um, they provided uh, pricing for the perimeter fence, the 10 foot tall fence with two and a half inch posts and, and one, and one and five eighths inch top and bottom rails. Uh, the option comes with this line here, which is the um, divider fencing. Uh, the, the, the Pickleball Association had requested that that be a, a, a hard um, chain link fence. So this option is for all of the interior fencing to be four foot tall um, chain link fencing, black chain link fencing. 
Um, so they're priced with freight and a discount for that option is $141,234.44. Uh, um, their second quote with the option, court surface being the same, painted, perimeter fence being the same, painted. Um, their interior fence uh, on the Wait, alley here, yeah, is still going to be chain link. Um, but the divider fencing is going to be a soft um, mesh or kind of like a net. I think you can talk. Yeah. Yeah, you can actually about you can join us at the table. Sure. Just speak your name and yeah. Yeah, the company sure. you're with. That'd be wonderful. I'm Dave Galesian Jr. from DG Contracting, Sport Court Northeast. Okay, so for that option, uh, it was one hundred thirty thousand dollars, nine hundred ninety, one hundred thirty thousand nine hundred ninety dollars and seventy seven cents. Um, do you so want? to? I'm going to ask this question. Can you like go back to the fencing? Yep. To the rendering? Yeah. Yep. So we planning a full, is it going to be a full size fence going between like these courts here? Is that a, is that a full That's height? a four foot tall. Four foot, four tall. foot tall fence. The yeah. whole outer perimeter will be 10 feet. Mm -hmm. the, the alleyway to get you in between courts will be chain link, but it will be four foot, I think we said. Yeah. And then four foot in between, but that would be high strung woven netting instead of chain link. So the high strung woven, does that need to come down every winter? No, it does not. What's the life expectancy? Um, we have courts that use it for 10, 15 years. You can lightly pressure wash it to get any like algae or if anything are starting to grow on it, but we don't, don't anticipate that as long as you upkeep with the court. Um, don't let stuff stick to it and stuff like that. Um, it lasts pretty well and it's pretty, it's much cheaper to replace than chain link would mm -hmm. be as well. And then does that go right to the ground as well? Like the chain link, weren't they talking about the balls rolling under? Wasn't that There's going to be top and bottom rail across everything, so that shouldn't be an issue. Okay. So even with the soft fetting? Yep. Yep. Okay. We use the same size post for everything, but if it's chain link, we have to beef up so that they're not as hollow and they're thicker walls. All right. Um, can you talk about the, the, the painting, the surface, uh, yeah. how, that, how that goes on, what the life expectancy of that is, yep. what so, the maintenance is? Yep, so there's three coats of what we call AR, and what that does is it kind of gets in like the imperfections of the pavement, kind of make it a nice uniform, even, even surface. And then we do two coats of color, and I think we discussed doing two or three coats, um, uh, two or three different color types. Um, and then what we do is we paint the lines directly on top of that, um, two coats, and I think we talked about white for most of it, but we could also do other colors if that is your preference as well. And what's the life expectancy of the coatings? It, it all depends. It lasts pretty well. Um, obviously, it's not going to be as long lasting as like the modular tile route that we talked about earlier on, but it is, um, it does last for several seasons. You can power wash it lightly um, to get anything out of it, but you can typically expect to get five, ten years easily out of it. Okay. And then for Sorry, Chris. For ongoing go maintenance, then it would be just coming back, recoding everything again. Yeah, you, yeah. You so you can scrape, scrape it and stuff. You just if it's really bad and chipping or something like that, but that's not typically. We can usually go right over it. Is there a warranty included? Um, I think two years would cover the fence and the paint. Okay. Yeah. So you have to get cracks and stuff. Mm -hmm. That's that's well, the thing of with asphalt. It is gonna right, it yeah. is gonna settle. Obviously, our recommendation would be to kind of beef up the underneath so that it has some proper drainage, but. That I know, yeah. money is limitations as well. Yep. So I believe uh, I don't I don't know how thick it is, but the company that's putting that down, I believe it's going to be a, an aggregate uh, gravel or, or stone yeah. underneath, plus the whatever goes on top and then the, the asphalt. Yeah. Uh, when we do our courts, we do usually five inches of crushed stone, like three quarter inch stuff, crushed stone, and it'll you know you're going to get water underneath it in the winter, but if you can allow it to drain below that, it will prevent any heaves and shifts. So. It's all how you prepare it, but. What about the, the nets for the courts? Are the, do those come down annually? Uh, so the net season? posts will stay in place, but the nets can come will come down. Um, you can use them in the winter, but you don't want snow accumulating, accumulating on them, and then the wire starts to kind of rust a little bit, but you can use them in the winter. Just you don't want to get wet constantly. Are they similar to the tennis net, I'm assuming? Very similar, yep. Played before, so Judy, I know you. Yeah, I think it's like an inch off in height. Okay. So, right. What was our price point and the impact fees? Do we have a it was a hundred and thirty-two, I believe, hundred and thirty-two thousand. So. Yeah, and as more impact fees come in, we can um, address the rec. I mean, uh, 
selectmen and ask for if we have any more. But I think right now it's we're right around 132, right? 132. I'm I'm going to ask the question: Do we need do we need chain link around the outside? Like around the not outside? the outside outside, no. but the the four footers. Do they need to be chain link? Or we originally we? had the soft netting. Right. Yeah, we we don't. I mean, this is this is yeah. what this is what the pickleball association pickleball came and asked of us. Um, they it's a wish list. Yeah. Right. So we, we certainly don't. I mean, we don't have to put any fencing in the middle if we don't want to. Right. right. No, I, what I'm saying is, is like, you know, I mean, I, I think the separating the courts, you don't need a channel fence. Go back I, I don't feel yeah. like that's even. But mm -hmm. even like you're separating the alleyways, all we're doing is. It's ball deterrence. All, all, yeah. yeah all, Why wouldn't all, we go to the less this, expensive all road? All this, this fence is doing is separating a walkway, which realistically, you know. I put a line down and say, stay on the side as you're walking now, and you can kind of do it. But I understand why you don't want stuff lying over there. But, you know, I mean, we're, we're at, the, at the edge of the, edge of the impact fee budget. I, I just don't see why there needs to be a, a chain link fence. It's not like, it's not like it. it Their like, concern with the soft fence was that some, and I, I didn't realize. I, what I was envisioning was something that's similar to, I guess, probably the, the actual nets themselves. Like one of those orange um, fences you Very similar. No, 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 not a safety they're, fence. They're very similar yeah. to the nets. Um, yeah. yeah, so so I guess their concern was somebody might fall over it. I don't, I don't yeah. know. Not for nothing, though, but that chain link fence, you will never have to replace that. No, you That won't. thing's you there won't. forever. Yeah, yeah, it's powder coated. It's high, high grade. Yeah, and that, that, so I, I mean, mean, I guess that's one benefit to, to actually. The other luxury easy, too right? is if you ever wanted to use it for another sport down the line, the chain link would hold up better for like street hockey stuff like that. Um, whereas the netting won't hold up as well. Pickleballs are very light, so it's not going to be an issue that way. I think along the front where the ADA access is, and it was made wide enough that. Um, people, if someone was there as a spectator in a wheelchair, would be able to sit there and that the, the metal fencing would keep people back if they're spectators in there. But um, Chris and I had originally had the, what do I call the soft, soft fencing. Soft mess, yeah. And um, I'm expecting a big rush of spectators. <laughs> <on the board>. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is growing. They, they are talking about tournaments. <laughs> yep, they're talking so, about and tournaments. keeping and people off the courts while those, those games are happening. So I could I understood from that point and also if you do have somebody coming through with a, a wheelchair or a walker that the chain links probably a little bit better than soft fence you, you know if mm -hmm. it gets hit or you know something gets run into or you don't want you know the walker to hook onto it but I between you know that that long going from one end to the other and then in between we really both felt we were talking soft fencing all along. Pickleball had at the meeting we met with them as yeah. as the reps were really pushing the chain link. But you're right, it's not that's not a necessity there. I totally understand though at that entranceway why we want might want something a little bit. And you know something if if it's a mix, if it's you know, this is this one is chain link yeah. and these are the soft that's fencing soft. along with the ones in the middle, <laughs> fine. Because you never know, like what happens if we say, if for some reason, you know, we decide they need, we could use it for a different activity one day, mm -hmm. and we wanted to pull down, like, this, open this area up. You can't take a chain link fence, chain link fence no. down. Well, the post would still be there, even if it's a soft fence. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, the post would yeah. still be there. so it's okay. almost the same. Yeah. The, it's the, almost the, the same. The yeah. fabric is different. But one's chain link and one's uh, mean, soft fencing. If you don't have something there, there, balls are going to be... The posts are they going to be the same size? They won't right. be as strong. The, the chain links will be stronger. Well, but I understand why. The, I understand why you want yeah. <laughs> what you want there. That's fine. I'm just yeah. having an issue with the. I need a structure that like I'm going to bounce off of if I hit it versus one that I'm going to kind of eh, and come back and if I hit it. If it's definitely pickleball, our, I, there's no advantage to our side. USA pickleball, and they're pretty strict about rules. Like I think you have to have eight feet in order for it to be a regulation side. Yep outside of the room of play so there are all of those rules but if, if it's strictly pickleball i don't see a problem with the netting and also like it will be a lot easier to replace obviously it won't last as long as chain link but if you're going to be playing just pickleball the ball is really light it's it, it's totally doable yeah and that was our thought with the size of the courts too um given the the restrictions that we that we ran into with the wetlands back there 
Um, the footprint is, is kind of what it is. We can't really go any bigger. So these four courts here are just slightly wider, a couple feet on each side than these two here. Mm -hmm. So I think our plan is that, you know, pickleball can probably reserve these four courts and then leave these two courts open for, for general use, general public, um, who want to come down and play and not necessarily reserve a court or, you know, put their put their name on a list uh, or pay dues to join the Pickleball Association, any of that. Do these, does this pickleball size and layout conform to U.S. Paper? The bottom floor definitely do, bottom, I believe, yeah. The bottom floor does, the top two do not, so. Correct. Okay. I, They're still the, It's regulation size courts, yeah. right. but what they say is suitable for out-of-bounds playing and all that stuff, it's slightly short of. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. But the floor down below are fine. Yeah. So, um, so, so, yeah, so what I did was I asked for some, some line item pricing on this. So that we could try and figure out what fits best in the budget and 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 you know give us the best bang for the buck. So for the uh, for the painting surface net, uh, the actual court nets and poles um, was thirty one thousand nine hundred fifty seven dollars and eight cents. Um, the rest is the the fencing fence work, um, and it's the same on both quotes that they offered here because, like I said, the only difference is the soft divider nets between the courts. Um, we did get a quote from Fences Unlimited, who've done a lot of work in town. Uh, they're not doing any work on the court themselves. Uh, no painting, no finishing. They don't do any of that. They're just doing the fencing. Uh, what they offered is the 10-foot tall uh, chain link around the perimeter of the, the courts, um, like we saw in the rendering up there. And this price is for the 4-foot tall chain link commercial grade fencing um, for the alleyways as well as the divider courts. Um, so, so their 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 price came to sixty five thousand eight hundred and seventy. Mike, what does that say? Seventy eight, seventy nine. Yes, six seventy eight lower. Yeah. So, um, but that does not include the soft netting. This is all divider all fence. This is all chain. It's, it's everything. Chain yep. The all divider chain. fence, the alleyways, and the perimeter. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So then, yep. the only thing so that would be is to have a company come in and put the actual pickleball netting in and that mm -hmm. type of stuff. Nets. Yeah. The and the painting, cornet. painting, painting, lining, yeah. Wow. Um, and then there was one other company um, that I got a price from. It just came in in a text message. Um, it wasn't a an actual quote. This is the the Northeast Sports Floors. Um, so their cost for finishing, <coughs> sorry, finishing and lining uh, with the paint over asphalt was thirty five thousand um, dollars. These are rough ballpark numbers he gave me, um, and then. One of the products that they offer, which is um, over paint, it's a, a surface that goes over the asphalt called Pro Cushion. It's um, similar to the tile that we had talked about before. I know Pickleball wasn't in favor of the tile. Um, they did call a reference that this company provided us on this surface. Uh, I believe they were down on the vineyard or somewhere down there um, that used it, and it was a glowing reference. Um, it's just softer, easier on the joints, that type of thing. It's a it's a membrane that goes over the surface and then paint on top of that and lining. Um, so that was $116,000. Uh, they've got the nets and poles for six grand and the footings per uh, for, for the nets and poles, 12 grand. Um, and then the fencing, he, he, he estimated between 60 and $80,000. He is still waiting on his number back from them. Um, so if we look at the breakdown between the three vendors, um, We've got the, 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 the court painting uh, around thirty-one thirty-one dollars to $35,000 between the two vendors. The fencing anywhere from um, you know, roughly about $100,000 to uh, 65000 if it's just the fence is unlimited, um, depending on the options. So. Now... If we decided to go with Fences Unlimited, would companies come in and be willing to put, like, for example, would your company be willing to come in and do the painting and put up the, the actual pickleball, like, work with us on that? Um, Obviously, the price would change. Potentially, yeah. yeah. Do you do the post and netting also for the nets? Yes. Yeah, we're turnkey, so it would be relationship manager throughout the whole process. Um, my father has the excavation side of things. My brother-in-law runs the install crew, and I do the sales division. So we've been doing uh, sports floorings indoor and outside for 27 years now. So um, we're fully licensed and insured. 
Um, we handle all of the Northeast pretty much with the exception of Eastern Mass. And typically, what does it take to put something like this in? Like if we call you and said, all right, the asphalt's ready. Yeah, so you'd be looking at it probably two to three weeks given the range due to weather, obviously. Yeah. But yeah, um, as long as we can get the concrete and everything in, it'll probably be about two weeks on site. And is there, obviously, this is all brand new. I don't know if Chris showed you where it's going, but the site work hasn't even been done yet. Mm -hmm. The asphalt most likely will be done first Mm -hmm. you know first time in the spring mm -hmm. is there a cure time or a wait time that you like to wait until the asphalt's hardened before you come in to start coring or does it really yeah so depends on what they're using for the asphalt but typically there is a little bit of a curing time it's not as much as cement or concrete where you have to wait like 30 days but we typically like to wait like a week and then we'll get in afterwards and do all the fence fence stuff and then um, paint on top of that because we don't want to have any imperfections in the fence posts or anything like that yep. mess up the paint and in this situation uh, I'm sure he explained to you is they're gonna come in and put it all down and then you're yeah. just gonna come in and core through it yeah that's part of the reason why we had to adjust up the pricing is because yeah. we're gonna be doing a lot of core drilling and hand mixing and stuff like that <clears throat> any other questions Nice job. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So, what do, do we want to send us so, um, like yeah. something we could print out and look over before the yeah, next meeting? I can meeting. send this whole thing. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I can send this whole thing. That would be great. I mean, do we want DG to go back and price it, not doing the fencing, to see what it would look like? I, I'm I'm in favor of that. Yeah, but yeah, if you're sure. willing to do that, I would, That's, be willing, I would yep. appreciate that. Yeah. Well, the other um, thing is, <coughs> maybe a cost with, with that interior fencing not being fencing. I, I mean, I'm just saying, like being the soft fencing. Being the soft fencing, yeah. like the, that that so, one stretch down the main outside would still be chain link, but yeah. everything in the middle would be soft. So just to put some numbers to it, yep. originally we had chain linking in the four sections, yep. which is I think 180 feet. That took off like eight eight grand just to change it to, to the netting. Right. So it's significant savings. Yeah. Um, and we're happy to do it either way. Okay. You don't want it to be the way that you guys want. I'm just trying to, I mean, honestly, I'm trying to figure out because after this is all done, you don't really, you, we can't count on going with the selectmen and saying, yeah, we want more. Right. Because they might be like, well, next project has it earmarked. Well, here's and the thing. Then, Once it's installed, it's no longer an impact. Right. And then the other thing is, is that there may be other costs that we have to pay for that we haven't right. really fully right. seen after this. So to go up against it with whatever right. we're on the installation of everything right. probably isn't what we want to do, especially for the fact that we can we don't need the Taj Mahal of courts. I'm sorry, we just I agree. Don't yeah. right. We I mean we agree with you. We were south yeah. fencing all the way when they brought up the hard fencing. It made sense in the walkway where we had to have you have to have the ADA accessible. Right. It made sense there, but we were thinking all soft fencing. Okay. So. Yeah, because we're at we're at the top of it, and yeah. Yeah. Right. and depending on how things go, and if we have any impact fees, it's not going to be substantial money. It'll be a little bit more, but it's not going to be enough to say, oh yeah, let's right. throw another fifty that's what, at it. That's that what I'm saying. Be, like no, if we, we could say, we you really mean just taking out that that many feet saved a grand? That's less than those just that walkway from oh, yeah. like across. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, you're talking a different. You're talking an extra, you know, sixteen say in there, on top of that. So like. That's a good amount of money to put this right. on to put to other needs for that area. Yeah. I mean, just in between going from chain link to soft, we saved eleven thousand dollars. Right. So, so if we do that other stretch. Right. Down, exactly. Yeah. It could, you know, if you look at it, footage wise, it could be another eleven thousand dollars. Right. You're yeah. saying stay with a ten foot perimeter, and then the chain like, link, initial right. walkway it's up chain right. link. Yeah. But like the the one that spans across the, the court. It's all yeah. Way that way. Yeah. The other thing I would just if you guys have specs on the fencing they were using, I can match it up. I just want to make sure it's apples to apples because if it's not the same, I can price that. It said it in his quote, and I think it was the same. It was the same gauge and thickness as post and everything Powder else. coated yeah. and everything. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think the only difference I saw between the quotes is his included a middle rail on the perimeter fencing. Okay. Um, but other than that, I think everything was apples for apples. Okay. Fences Unlimited does a lot of work. They with, do a lot of work the, in town. The town. Yeah. yeah. 
because um, they have a family connection with the town, so that's why they yeah. They're the only reason why I ask is sometimes the how hollow or thick the walls are depends with the the, the gauge for sure, and I just want to make sure that it's apples to apples. That's all. So I'm 100 percent with you mm -hmm. on that. Mm -hmm. No, I I didn't think we needed that hard fencing that much. You know that much of it. I thought that was a little bit. And plus, we'll give us some breathing room. If anything yeah, happens. Yes. Well, the, we but you know, know something's going to come up. Something's definitely going to come up for the first aid mm -hmm. kit. Put the fences in over. You know, there's yeah, there's going to be stuff because even. It's a construction project. There was even talk about, you know, the hanging <laughs> sound barrier off of, yeah. you know. Yeah, it's just, a, yeah, that's a daily life. Yeah. 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 That's, but if that's neighbor complaint, yeah. you know, a butters yeah. type of thing. But, yeah, I totally agree that we don't need that. All right. So, so Dave, will you, will you yep. provide us a quote for yeah. the surface uh, and then work for and the, and the netting on the inside, everything inside but chain link on the outside? Yeah. Is that right? Uh, no, chain link, so... Chain link, the yeah. alleyway, the, yeah, that first the alleyway, the just the one that abuts the chain link Correct. coming yeah. in. The one that goes from across, it would be soft. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Your head's in the way. Yeah, it's kind of <laughs> trying to block the signal. Are you going to eat your chocolate? There you are. You Get through the milk. meeting. Yeah. How are we doing? So, so I can have the conversation. So soft. This stays chain link. Okay. This is soft. Sure. These two. Yep. Right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. 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 And all in the, between. All the four foot fencing is <laughs> soft fence. The in betweens are already yeah. soft now. Yeah. yeah. So, yep. Yeah. So even yeah, the. Yeah. Even the four foot up front. They no right. Oh, that's just those two. Right that now, was, it's on this proposal. Yep. Uh, here, it's just the divider fencing the alleys between and the chain links. Just the four sections that adjoin two courts yep. is what I did for that chain the yep. netting. Yeah. But I'll price out that middle too. Mm -hmm. All, right. All right. And yeah, if we look at uh, so so yeah, your your chain link right, five hundred and sixteen feet, ten foot tall, two and a half posts. One and five eighths top and bottom rail. Their um, their quote five hundred and four feet ten foot high black vinyl commercial grade fence, two by eight gauge fuse bonded mesh. I mean there yeah two and a half inch inch five eighths top and bottom top bottom and mid rail. So looks like it's probably the same stuff. Okay. Yeah, I can put some numbers together for you for the changes. Yeah, great. Appreciate that. No problem. Thanks for taking the time to come in. Oh, yeah, no problem. I know how it is. Yeah. Local. <laughs> yes, we are. North Andover. So. <laughs> but I travel a lot. So. <laughs> so, thank, you. Thank, okay, you so thank you so much. Thank you. Have a great evening. You too. Thank you, Chris. Appreciate that. Um, is there anything else we need to... Missing tables found. Missing found. tables found. Well, found. Did you go in the, sh go in the mystery shed? I was sleuthing. No. We were, no, like, trying to brainstorm going. everywhere we would have seen them. Crazy. Um, they're, they're in the voting trailer. Oh. Used them for voting. So Kevin Brown grabbed them from town and put them in the trailer, used them for voting, left them in the trailer. They're in the trailer now, so we told them just leave them there until after voting, and then we'll pull them out and use them for it. Which is strange, because every time in the, in the past, we've always used the tables from Campbell for voting. Yeah. So that's why I never would have thought about voting. But then yeah, when I, someone said it was voting, I'm like, yeah, there were yeah, a whole bunch Yeah, because I remember, <laughs> because I could picture when I went to register, seeing yep. Terry's mom at the white table, thinking, oh, I wonder if those are our tables. But then, you know, months later, I wasn't I thinking, know. that's where our tables were. Well, historically, it was always, yeah. you know, the janitors came in, they'd set up, they'd yeah. break it down, put it all the way. And we need to put stenciling in the back that says LRC so that we, we can identify him. But he said he has 20 or 24. Yeah. 24, yeah. 24. Which makes sense. But I mean, good place you're missing for two to be or three, trailer, no big nice deal, but when yeah. there's that many, you know, at some point in time, we paid a lot of money for them. So, so technically, they were in the old fire station. They were. They were. <laughs> yes. Also, don't forget to buy your um, comedy night tickets. They're selling yes. quickly. Buy early, buy often. Selling very quickly. So if you want to go. And we're only going to do one Well, we'll be away, but we said we were going to buy tickets anyway. Okay, But great, just don't you. count our tickets as us being there. All right. Because we'll be on vacation. 
So I'll just I'll then mow you the money. Do the same thing with the airline. We're gonna oversell. Maybe. Give it to us in via PayPal. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to work with uh, Mr. Chris Burns and try to get a Budweiser. Nice. Nice. Oh, that's awesome. Gift basket, yeah. Oh, it's 25 each. Might be this jacket. Right I'm now. almost done with it. How about you just roll a keg? Yeah, exactly. Put a put, uh, put it put it put get put, you know raffle and raffle. go from there. Yeah. A dollar raffle. Will you be the beverage sponsor? For? I could be. <laughs> um, he'll, he'll be why the OB. That's right. That's what I'm hoping he'll do. See? Sponsor that. Talk at, least for, that. at least for our table. Can you be a BYOB and provide? Probably not. <laughs> All right. Let's not put this on TV. Should we no. make a motion? <laughs> <or is it? laughs> yes. That's a good point. Next meeting. I'd like, mo- um, like to make a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Abstains. Oh, nays. Abstains. Hey. <laughs> 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 I'm an eye. <laughs> motion carries. Seven zero zero. It's 50 bucks. Thank you, Sean. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Matt.